now that we have found some great activities by looking in the Seesaw community or in our school library or in the district library, or maybe even creating them ourselves, let's go ahead and edit an activity. So here I'm looking in my library and I see this activity that I got from the Seesaw community. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this. And as I look at this, it's, it's pretty good, but I think I wanna change a few things because I maybe just do this a little bit differently in my class. So because I tap the heart to favorite this and add it to my library, I now see three dots down here at the bottom of the activity. And when I tap on those three dots, I can copy and edit this activity. So I'm not editing the original person's activity. I'm making a copy of it and editing my copy, which is in my library. So I can change it up for myself. And remember, Seesaw activities are free and it is totally okay to edit and change those activities up to make them perfect for your class. So first of all, I wanna come in here and take out the word fry because I always call these sight words in my class. So I'm gonna change the title. Next, I'm looking at the instructions here and notice that those little icons disappeared and now they're words. So I have my Seesaw icon shortcut list and this is really helpful when I wanna create these little pictures or icons in my instructions, especially for my emergent readers who maybe can't read the word microphone, but they can see this little mic tool and look for the mic tool in Seesaw and use that. All right, so each of these icons has a shortcut code that starts with a colon and then a keyword and is follows, followed up by a colon. So this mic is colon, mic, colon. All right, the text label is colon, label, colon. So having this list is really handy to be able to reference and look at until you've used these a lot and, and have them all memorized at some point, right? All right, so I'm gonna go back over here to this activity and I'm gonna read these instructions. So it's telling the students to tap on the add response I'm going to take out the word icon um, button and my students are already logged in on their own account so they don't need to find their name to do this. Next they're going to study the words on their list. Okay that's good. Then they're going to tap on the mic. I'm going to take that word icon out again and read each row as quickly as you can. Sure. All right I want them to pause after this so we're going to pause the recording, so we're going to tap pause, that's colon, pause, colon, to stop recording. And last, tap the check to save to your journal. All right. Now if I play these audio directions here, it probably is someone reading aloud these directions. It's time for sight word check. All right, you know, that's really pretty good, but I want my students to hear my voice and be thinking about me as they're doing this activity so that they remember the way I would have them do this in my class. So I'm gonna tap on this X over here to get rid of this person's voice. And then I will tap on add voice instructions. Now the first time that you do this, you're probably going to get a message asking for permission for your browser to use your microphone or if you're on your iPad for the app to use your microphone go ahead and allow that. Then I'm going to tap on this mic here and I'm going to read these directions. First tap the add response button. Next study the words on your list. Then tap the mic and read each row as quickly as you can. Tap the pause button to stop recording. Last, tap the check to save to your journal. All right, it's gonna upload that audio. I could play that audio and listen to myself. If I felt like I need to do it over again, I could tap the X and I could record again. I think it's probably pretty good. All right, for this activity, there's actually a template attached. So if I tap on this little picture, 
I can see that each student is going to have this picture as their background for this activity. Now you don't create these in Seesaw. You would create this somewhere else like Google, Google Slides or Keynote or PowerPoint. Whichever of those applications you like to use and whichever you feel most confident in using. So you would create this in a slide and then you would export or download that slide as an image. So either as a JPEG or a PNG file. Then you could upload it here in Seesaw. Alright, so I'm going to tap on this X to get back here. And just to show you how you would do that, I could come over here and tap this X to delete this template. And now I'm going to click on the link to add a template for student responses. So every student will see this as the background of their activity. I'm going to click here on Upload. If I created this in Google Slides, I could click over here on Select from Google Drive. I'm going to come over here to Select from Computer to grab this. And I'm going to grab it here from my desktop and tap on Open. Now that image or template looks really small here on the box. But once I tap this green check mark, you'll see that it is now full screen. It fills up the entire screen. If I were making an activity where my students were going to sort something, I could add some labels using the text label tool. Um, that doesn't apply to this activity though, so I'm just going to go ahead and tap on the green check and it's going to upload that image again to this activity and as I scroll down we'll be able to see it here. Alright, let's do one more thing here as we're editing this activity. I'm going to tap down here on this arrow for more options and as I scroll down if I were sharing this activity with other teachers, maybe at my grade level, I could put some directions in here that maybe only those teachers would need. Um, students would not be able to see these directions so if students needed some kind of math manipulatives, I could put in this box, make sure students have these math manip manipulatives to do this activity. For this, I'm going to leave that blank, and I'm going to tap down here for the skills, and I'm going to add some skills to this activity. Now, I don't have all the skills uploaded here to my PD class, so I'm going to choose listens well. Um, actually, I'm going to choose Listens Carefully to Directions because there's audio directions. In your class, you would have the Literacy Power Standard skills, the Math Power Standard skills, and the Science Big Ideas and Enduring Understandings. And you could also add any other skills that you want as well. Maybe something like Listens Carefully to Directions, Works Well with Others, anything that you want to track on your student's performance. All right, I'm going to tap the green check. And now what that has done is it has associated that skill or tagged that skill on this activity before students even see it. So it's going to save me a lot of time later so that I don't have to go through and choose that skill for every student in my class who does this activity. All I will need to do is tap to mark the number of stars to show their proficiency of their work and that standard or that skill, right? So it's going to save me a lot of time. Now I'm going to tap on the save button and now we can see it changed me to be the author or creator of this activity and again remember that's perfectly okay in Seesaw. Activities are free and they're available for you to edit and change and make your own so that it works for you. All right, now we can see we have all those icons here in our directions to make it easy for our students who maybe are emerging readers to be able to follow, follow the directions. And here's our audio direction button as well so they can play those directions and hear me telling them what to do.